good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're listening to us from. This is Footprints, a podcast that tells the stories and shines a light on our elders and the footprints they have walked, the paths they have beaten for us and the lessons that they want to pass on to us. In the first half of this, we listened to Miria, to her story from a village girl that she said, all the way to international platforms. She said she trusted God. He gave her a vision and he enabled her to fulfill it. And she did it, whether she was at the resistance committee in her local village, all the way to the African Union Parliament and beyond. Wherever she was required to speak, she spoke out for women, for girls, for gender equality. And now, Miria, we want to come to the evening years. Yes, you have fulfilled your mission. You have done your calling. But you know, as we all do, life starts to wind down, starts to slow down. You start to see that one day, I will indeed not have these positions. I am transitioning into my next phase of life. And for some people, that because that is such a hole, they cling on to what they, we have now. Mm. And then for others, you say, you know what? This is not the end. Yes, I had public service. I had political office. I had high office. This is not the end. There's a transition to something else. And that's the story I want you to, to walk us through, that transition to this phase of your life and what it has been like and what your advice is to leaders out there right now who are contemplating this transition and are afraid? <laughs> Actually, I was... Uh, it's good you are talking about this transition. But for me, I was not even ready for transition because uh, I think politicians run before them. They are not like public servants who prepare and they give the age for, 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 for retirement, for retirement yes. and they prepare their retirement package. Mm -hmm. And so those ones have no excuse really mm -hmm. to prepare where they are going. Mm -hmm. But for us, like, uh, you know, these people, I had worked for 20 years. Actually, I entered politics to go to parliament. I was a youth. Mm -hmm. I think I was 30, 33 years. Mm -hmm. That's when I, I went mm -hmm. to, to politics. And 20 years, I worked in the political arena. Mm -hmm. I was thrown away eh, unexpectedly and prepared yes. when I was 53 years. So 20 my years. My age right now. Hey, oh my 20 goodness. years yes. of full work. Yes. And I knew I was still moving on, yes. vibrant. I had not finished, you know, the, the cause. But because of my integrity, I object to the removal of term limit, and they threw me out like that, you know, like yes. that. So I was not prepared. But this God, you see, because I had already made noise all over the place. Eh? Now, as soon as I found myself seated here in this house. Actually, I'm glad you brought this issue because I even wrote a small book entitled Political Evangelism, The Beauty of Conversing with God. Why did I call it political evangelism? I wanted to evangelize the politicians so that they may know that you can, there is life after politics. Mm. Because in fact, it is the politicians who fall in this Mm. suffering, or who speak there and they can't get out. When this God of mine prepares me, when the next day, when the last elections in Uganda were held, and me, today you are honorable Pan-African Parliament member, the next day you are nobody, no title, no nothing. Mm. It was amazing how God prepared for me because within three days, I got this call to go to Washington at the National Endowment for Democracy for a good five months. So God gave me a soft landing. Mm. So I went there 
my five months, I spent them, you know, consecrate, concentrating on my God and what I could do. So that's when it came to my mind and I said, if I cannot run with my vision in politics, can't I run with it in a civil society? Mm. So that's when I made a proposal to those people who had called me for the fellowship to establish the Center for Women in Governance. And when I came here and established it, they, they gave it the first funding. But wait a minute. Even before I started sitting in there, the Lord said that that was not what he meant for me to do. And so I never even went on with that thing. But I established it. Up to now, it is running, just like I did with Oxford. Up to now, it is there. For me, I establish and go. Mm. So I had a very, very serious challenge here. Now saying, when I, I remember when I came back from, from Washington, I came here after five years. Imagine you've been honorable over the place passing, eh? and people, now you, you don't know, 20 years is good, too long for you to be now the local person. <laughs> Remember, I was a local person 33 years. Yeah. I'm now 53, you know? I mean, it was very difficult for me. It was very scaring. How do I fit into the community? Where do I go? How do I start? It was very scaring and very shaky. Mm. Because in Africa, it is so bad. Imagine all the distinguished work I had done. Hmm? When you were dropped, you were like garbage. Mm. And yet in Europe or developed countries, they use these brains. Yeah. I'd be one like now these board members of important organizations or human rights or whatever, or, or public, whatever, board members of things. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to get that and continue using your brains. But in Africa, that's it. 53 years, this vibrant woman making influence all over the place, that's it. It was just like that. It was very shaky. And I couldn't know. So I, I came here. I remember I called my neighbors here. I said, you better pray for me because I really don't know what to do. But you know, being a Christian, I talk as a Christian and I, 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 I think it is one way that can redeem human beings. Because when I, was, when I went to, to Washington as a safe landing, with, did they give, they gave me thousand dollars, you know, over how many, was it five thousand dollars to keep me there? I got an apartment. Every day I would go and visit, talk to people and that kind of thing. It was really relaxing. Mm -hmm. Five months of relaxation. No, I think it was, was it thirty thousand or twenty five thousand dollars for maintenance there? Mm -hmm. So, but I looked at it, being a Christian, I looked at it, the story of Elijah. Mm -hmm. You know, when Elijah announced that there would be no rain, God took him to a brook. He said, go to that brook. I will be supplying you. The ravens supply the food. And, and, and the, the, uh, Elijah got the water from the brook, but the ravens supplied food. So I said, I am here like Elijah. Mm -hmm. eh? Because I was supplied for you remember I was thrown away with nothing. Yes. Because me, we didn't get any pension. I didn't get any gratuity. I worked for this country 30 good years of hard work and committed me, commitment. But I was thrown away like garbage without anything. So I didn't. And those days, we were not stealing. We were working hard, depending on the salary. What had I prepared? I know I had prepared one thing during my allowance, my constitutional allowance or what. I had built a, a house in Intinda there, which was being rented. And actually the rent is the one which helped me even for the home in Ushen, you know, settle to know you would be here and there. But as for cash, yes, it was done. not there. It, right up. it was not there. Mm. So when, I, uh, when I, I was praying to God now, when the brook dries, I want you to give me the widow of Zarephath. 
You know, the Elijah, God told Elijah when the brook dried, he said, you move from here, I will give you a widow, get your widow to supply for you. So I said, God, when I go back to Kampara, give me a widow of, of that faith. <laughs> so I came here. I sat here. I couldn't even go out. Like they would look at me as if I'm embarrassing. I felt like I was a thief. You know, it is... Don't, that's when I learned that that's why people don't want to leave that office. Mm. Because of the attitude even the, the people have towards them. Eh? I remember even when I was still in Barada after losing election, you know, the woman said, you know, they bought all the elections and so on. They said, no, it's rubbish, I'm a look at her. Mm. A person who has been doing all this for you. But anyway, if I didn't have God, I don't know what would have happened to me. It's a very sad thing situation. So I, I said, God, now when I go, I want the widow of Zarfi. So when I sat in this house, what was amazing is this, which people should know. Mm. What bothered me so much was not the sustenance. What shall I eat? What shall I drink? Or what? I have no money. No. And yet I didn't have it. Mm. But what disturbed me, it was amazing, was that Oh my God, I'm going to disappear in oblivion. Mm. This issue of self significance mm. is so, so important to people. Yes. Because that's what was paining me. Where shall I go? Because you see, when you are honorable, Matembe, whatever function they call you on for a function, I mean, you are the chief guest, I mean, you are a guest speaker, I mean, you cannot disappear in oblivion. Mm. You are in the limelight all the time. Mm? Because of the position you are holding and because of what you are doing. When they call you for a party, they call uh, because you are honorable, minister of ethics, whatever. Mm -hmm. So you, you stay in public, you don't disappear in oblivion. So that's what challenge be most mm -hmm. I'm going to disappear in oblivion. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I was waiting for the widow whom I asked God to give me for the supply. Mm -hmm. So those are the two things that were disturbing me. And I started walking. Every day I would wake up and, and pray and, you know, and go and walk. Mm -hmm. As I walked, I would be speaking with my God. And then after about a month or so, in the meantime, I'm writing out this thing for, say, we go, it had not started. I would be writing and to, to establish it. About two months ago, you know, I was walking. I remember even where I was walking, to where I reached. And then I was saying, but God, where is this widow? When is the widow coming? I tell you, I was a fool. I don't know what type of a widow. I didn't know if it was physical widow or what. I don't know. But I was waiting for God to send me the widow whom he sent to Elijah for sustenance. Then, you know, when I was saying, but this widow, when we, the, then God, the voice said, but you mean you don't see, the, you don't see her? Then I said, where is she? You know, where you are walking, you are not asking loud, but it's in the spirit. In the spirit, mm -hmm. I said, where is she? Then God started listing. Don't you have food? Don't you have your vehicle? Doesn't it have fuel? Don't you have your airtime? Don't you have electricity in the house? Don't you? If they had reached like six things. Then I said, oh, the widow means supply. You know, I, I hadn't realized that mm -hmm. I, was, I, I, was, I was not lacking anything. Yes. I said, oh my God. So the widow means supply. Mm -hmm. I came here very excited. You know, I told Nick, you know what? I have met God there on the way. Said mm. which God was for him, he doesn't bother. But me, I was excited. When I went back the next day, the same spot, he said, he reminded me, by the way, the widow had to first part with what he had to give to Elijah, the oil and flour. So God was showing me I must part with the little man I had for him. Mm. So I got, he even told me how much I got the money which I had. It, because with my daughters, I had come with a few of the daughters which remained. So I, I got this kamani, I took it to church. Mm. I told them, you know what? This is not a tithe, this is not an offering, this is, I'm planting a seed. Mm. I'm planting a seed for the word of God to 
to germinate and grow because he gave me my word. Now, another day, now the, the supply was now sorted because he said he would supply. Mm. He said, I will not lack. I not lack. And the lacking was dependent on the rain. I will not lack until it rains, you remember that we, yeah. so I knew I will not lack anything until he deploys me into what he wants me now to earn from that. Now the other day, I was still agonizing with the oblivion, oblivion. Then one day when I was seated there, I was praying and you know God said, you know what, if you thought that these positions which you had were the ones putting you in the limelight, you are mistaken. He said, it is me who was giving you those opposition positions. So it is me who was putting you there. And he said, now it, you, for you, you are mine. And the positions have left you. But me, I'm still with you. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you will never disappear in oblivion. You people, those two things, God sorted out the supply and then sorted out the disappearance into oblivion. I can assure you this is a pain years since then. I have not left. Mm. I may not have mansions. I don't have mansions. I don't have benzes to drive. I don't have whatever. But I have lacked nothing. I have not lacked anything. God has made sure that he has sustained me. And moreover, this is now when I come with the, who is this? Is it Maxwell? John Maxwell. John Maxwell says that a, a leader's passion to carry out her vision or her dream mm -hmm. does not depend on the position, but it depends on the passion. I proved this right, mm -hmm. that the leader's courage to carry on, to run with, the, with her, her, her dream or vision does not depend on the position, but on the passion. I can assure you, with my 18 years of out of office at all, I am still running with my vision. I am still influencing. And I want to say that influence does not depend on the position. And therefore, leadership, does, leadership is about influence. And I have come to realize or to prove that leadership is about influence and influence does not depend on a position. It depends on you having a vision and having a passion, determination, and commitment to run with that vision. And particularly when that vision is God's purpose for your life. I have proved it. I have lived it. I have, I have told you right now, 18 years out of any office, I continue to be of influence. I have never disappeared in oblivion. I have never run. I have never lacked. Some of the children were not, had not finished this. You know, we have not talked about my family life. Mm. But some of the children were not yet in the university. All my children had not married at all, but I can assure you, I had very gracious, glorious weddings for my children, or the children finished, include, plus whatever, I don't know how many weddings I have held here. I don't know how many, I, I am telling you, God is real, and his promises are real. And let me tell you, one of the promises which I'm waiting for, which she told me one day when I was seated there, she said he was weaving a grand design for my destiny. And I interpreted that to mean until it rains. 
He told Elijah, the flour and the oil will not run out until it rains. And so the flour and the oil which I'm depending on from my God will not run out until the grand design which is with him comes. You see me, you see I'm 70 years. Hey, I've not yet started mm -hmm. the second phase of my purpose in life is there. You do, bless yourself, don't think my thing is going home or going home. I will go home when I'm done. You know, I'm talking to people who may say, ah, I'm attending with her God. But I'm telling you, God gave me this scripture, which is John chapter 15, verse 16. It says, I chose you and appointed you. I chose you and appointed you that you may bear fruits, fruits that would last. That was God telling me. He chose me. I did not choose him. He chose me and appointed me that I would bear fruits. If God had wanted me to just work and work and earn a man and eat and be happy and enjoy, he would not have added fruits that would last. Fruits that would last. What he meant, he chose me, gave me a purpose of influence, and I have to influence the people, his people, so that by the time I go, I will not go. That's what you call a legacy. That's what you call a legacy. I'm living in this country for 18 years ago, let me tell you. If I ask you, do you know, you young people, do you know the, the women, even the 39 women who started off in NRC? We started off when we were 39. Eventually we became 54. Eventually we became so many. All the districts are increasing, increasing. Do you remember how many women worked with Matembe in the parliament all this time who are still in the limelight? They could be there in their homes. They could be there with the mansions. They could be there with very huge business, hotels, you know, they've made uh, skyscrapers and all that. Well, they're influencing because people sleep in their hotel. But my biggest talent is my mouth. My best skills or whatever is my courage. My courage, my integrity, in other words, my mouth and my character. And therefore, the influence I make onto the community, not only here, but in the world, through my mouth, the words I speak, and usually, you remember when Peter, you remember when, when John and Peter found a beggar at the, at the temple of God? Hmm? He asked them, give us money. And Peter told them, Ma silver, silver and gold we don't nine. have. Mm. But what I have, I, I give, give to you. Me. Stand up and walk. Mm. So for me, these girls, the young girls, the young marriages, the young boys whom I influence every day by my word, they don't even have to see me. You saw the man we met there, the elder man, when he said, but I seem to know you. But I think, when I said I'm Matembe, oh, Matembe here, of People have been, I, people in this parliament, they told me, you are my mentor, you are my mentor. I've never seen them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure these girls here who are here with you, they will, I cannot go and address, talk to an audience and go out without impacting on somebody. So many girls in parliament, all these women in parliament, everywhere in many jobs and so on, they come, they meet you and say, when you came, when you came to marry hero, in senior two, I was in senior two, but this, and they remember the words which I say that spark them off. This Sarah Pendi, I thought I had never seen her. When I was congratulating, I said, oh, you are doing very well, you, uh, you make me proud. He said, but you, um, you are my mentor. I said, Sarah, I don't know you, I not seen ah, You came to so Tororo Gangs. You talked to us one day, and I said, I will be like Matembe. So there are so many girls all over in the schools, in Akasura, everywhere where I used to go, because I used to visit every school. But the words I would give, 
but it was not me. God chose me for a purpose. I'm telling you, God chose me and appointed me for a purpose, and my purpose is to run for justice and fairness. And you know why he supports me, this God of mine? Mm -hmm. Because justice and righteousness are the foundation of God's throne. So anybody who runs for justice and what is right, if you make right actions and divine authority eh, you, to govern your principles in life, God holds you and you run with him. Let me tell you, these people in this government, eh, whatever, whatever they make, what, I'm here. Do you see me with a fence? Do you see me with whatever you see? Who do you think is keeping me safe? And he told me, I have my scripture, Jeremiah. I stand on it. And he says, well, they will fight you, but they will not manage you. So for me, I want to tell people, I didn't prepare, but because I was standing in the right, sta right footing with God, when I stood for integrity and I was thrown away, he picked me. I didn't tell you how he began with me because of the skills, because of talking for women, because immediately I started getting contracts. I became a consultant for women in politics. Mm -hmm. We all these countries, Sierra Leone, where, where, Liberia, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Botswana. I became a consultant for about, I think, like at least three years of my being here. And that was make, giving me dollars, was it it? So when it gave me dollars, I also started, you know, that's how I made the weddings for my children. That's why we made all this. And, and, and you know, by then my husband had retired and my, when they are working, earning salaries, it was not much. But what, what God did for us, because my husband also stood on integrity when they were stealing beer, building mansions, he never did because he, he has integrity also. So when he was retiring, he retired when I was a minister. When he was retiring, they gave us. This plot and the house here is a gift for integrity. For us, in our family, we have depended on integrity. People may laugh at this house, we renovate here and there. But God has kept us. Don't we have wealth here now, this land? Yeah. So we have inheritance for our children. Because of standing for integrity, God gave us this inheritance mm. for our children. And we are waiting for them to, to take it and use it. But uh, now, if I were to conclude, mm. I would say that I would appeal to everybody to really identify their God-given purpose. Mm. In this world, we are made differently, but we are made by God. Because God created each of us for a purpose. Mm. Do you know that I didn't know my biggest talent, that this mouth of mine was my biggest talent until seven, until champions. When I talked to president, very tough and harsh against removing the term limit. He was very angry with me because I talked to him in public and with all the confidence and with all the believing. I believed in what I was saying. I was driven in leadership, not for personal interest, for the people of Uganda, that they would have justice, they would have fairness, they would progress. Not fighting, fighting. And we put the term limit. And I see him saying, Let's remove the term limit to go back to where we came from. I stood up and with all the confidence and courage, which Ugandans don't have, for them when they see president, they want to kneel down. For me, when I see the president, I see a human being like me. I see him as a human being like me. I give him who is honor, but I tell him what he should listen to, but others fear. So when I told him he was so angry, he was so angry, he abused me publicly. And I was so annoyed and I regretted why I ever put in my life, my energy to work. Now she's treating me like garbage before he dropped me. And I said, when I go home, I will resign. That night, I didn't even pray. Hmm. But in the morning, huh, 
In the morning, God gave me scripture. It is Isaiah 49, verse 1 to 3. And he said, I gave your mouth like a sharpened sword. I hid you under the shadow of my hand. I made you into a sharp arrow. I concealed you into my quiver. And I said, you are my servant. I put Miriam there. He said, my servant Israel. Isaiah is my servant. Yes, Isaiah. My servant Isaiah. I said, you are my servant Miriam. In whom I will display my splendor. That's what he told me. And then he said, what, is, what made me know that that was my word? He, the words which were following, they were saying, and I said, I wasted my time. I, I, I worked for nothing. I toyed for nothing. I wasted my energy. Exactly what, what, I, what slept in my yes. head. Yes. And then he went on to say, but my reward comes from God. Whatever is due to me is from my God. Wow. It was done. It was sealed. I started dancing in the room, singing and dancing, and Mukwaya was next to door. I said, hey, Miriam, what's wrong with you? Remember, in the night, I had gone very depressed, deeply broken that I'm this. And when I was telling the president, I was speaking to him in love. Mm. I was, you know, he, that's why I got so hard, because I was speaking to him as the, the father of the nation, in love, please continue your legacy. Don't go into this. Don't be like Obot and I mean, please let. Oh, for him, he didn't take it that way. So I was so hot. I was so bit. I went to sleep. And now in the morning, I'm excited. I have had a personal encounter with God. And from there, I knew, oh. So my mouth, hey, God gave me my mouth. I should not regret that I talked. God was saying, yes, it was right, you talked. That's what God was telling me. And from that, that's when after that, actually, the, he, he went, he called us to watch Torah, and then I told him my mind, I told him, for me, you and I, we have parted. Eventually, of course, we parted. But God... Every person should know that he was created by God. For a purpose. And he was created for a purpose. Mm. And that purpose was to bear fruits and fruits that would last. We are not supposed to work for ourselves. We are supposed to work and work and leave an impact which will impact on other people. And so they need to know their purpose. What are they called for? Secondly, they need to know their talents. They need to know their talents. You know, many people, you know, there is this story in the Bible of the talent where Jesus was telling people, a man got the five, he gave one, one talent to one person, another to two, another four, and uh, five. And when he came back, they were all accounting. Mm. They, they accounted that they used their talents. But the talent, the one person with one talent, you know, he told this master, that for me, I know you. You are so tough. Mm. And one thing that God revealed to me recently, I, this man who got one, he said, I know you, you are a very cruel person. You always have a where you have not planted. But I used to say, but this man had planted this time. He had planted his one talent to him. But you know, God revealed to me that his people, he has many people here whom he gave talents who don't know that they have them. That's why that man was saying, I know you, you, do, you have a square, you don't plant. But the man had planted a talent, had given him one talent. And you know that story says, each according to his ability. Mm -hmm. We must know that each of us have abilities. abilities. Mm -hmm. And you don't admire the other person's ability. And now that I'm talking to women while I'm concluding, the reason why I call myself uh, 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 an accomplished woman of destiny who has, who is very successful in what she went to do. I never fought fellow women. Mm. I never, I never, because God told, revealed to me, if he made you, you know, it is trees which bear fruits. Yes. Each tree bears its own fruit. Eh? 
You see this bunch of matoki, it will bear matoki. That fruit of mine, the popo, it will bear popo. Now we have oh, fene here, it will bear fene. We have passion fruit. Now, if fene, instead of concentrating on producing its own fruit, is going to ah, I wish I could produce popo. You are not going to produce popo. You are not going to do that. You concentrate, if it is passion fruit, concentrate on your passion do the fruit. Best passion do the fruit. best passion fruit. Yes. If it is a mango, do your mango. If it is a small mango, it makes a nice juice. If it's a big mango, you eat it as a fruit. I can assure you, every fruit has people to love it. And so, women out there, instead of beginning to compete, Araba, oh, no, this one is this, this. No. Get what tree are you? Start producing those very fruits. And I can assure you, they will be taken, they will be of influence, and you will be okay. Mm. And that's what I tell to women. Find your purpose, identify your talents, and you've got it each according to your ability. Don't care about the one with five parents, his ability was bigger. And by the way, whoever gets more, Eh? We'll be, we'll account for more. Yes, also we'll, <laughs> we'll account for we'll, more. We'll yes. need more accountability. Yes, you see? Yes, yes. So, me, I think that is the message I can conclude. I am not who I am because of myself. It is by the grace of God who created me, knowing that He's created me for a specific purpose. And I, I have served that purpose and I continue to purpose it with no remuneration, by the way, God, God knows when to remunerate me because he said, my reward comes from God. What is due to me comes from my God. The, if you go and see the, those people who retired with the packages or whatever, you, you think they are happy, as happy as I am. And maybe one thing I, oh, I say this, we finish. At one time, the, I visited, the, the devil met me on the way, on the journey. I used to meet God and we converse, but one day the devil met me. And you know what he did to me? He showed me. He said, you, Miriam, you think you are anything. You think you are, you, they used you, they dumped you there. You are useless. Look at you. Look at you, Kadaga. Hmm? You are even older than Kadaga. You are a senior, a counsel in law. And even in parliament, when I went to when Museven came, I was in the NRIM. She was not in the NRIM. She was over DP because we was DP. And me, I embraced the NRIM and I ran with it. By the time they came into the politics, I had gone there before them. But God was saying, but the devil was saying, look at them. For you, they threw her away. That one has been a speaker. All the time, she has never failed to get a job. Kadaga got jobs right from the beginning. Minister, up to see deputy speaker twice. Speaker twice, then Honorable Kasue, Vice President. Then there was also this Julia 17 day. She raised like quite and I'm the one who contributed in making him huh, the commissioner for human, you know, for police to investigate corruption. That's when she was elevated and came. So God went on the journey showing me you are nobody, you are nothing. That's the why they, mm. they threw you mm. out. And you know, this devil is real. Mm. I usually walk with my energy. By the time I reached my gate, I was about to be dragged in. The jealousy, the envy, the bitterness, the hatred, how this man has used me and dumped me as if I didn't realize what I went to do. And how these people are doing very well and that kind of thing. Now you are rubbish, you are nothing. Mama, mama, I came in with all this bow down every day. Mm, way down. God is good. I walked at my altar. And when I reached my altar, and I was praying, you know, God led me to what? He realized I was finished by this day. At my altar, I encountered my Jesus. You know what Jesus, God told me? Exact word that I needed to hear. And it is Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews verse 1, chapter 9. You know what it says? Hebrews? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. Verse nine. It mm. says, you have loved justice, you have hated wickedness, and loved righteousness. Therefore, 
the Lord your God has set you apart and has anointed you with oil of gladness above your companions. You go and read it. Can you imagine the devil was bringing companions and I'm so finished, I'm like, I'm done, I'm useless. And then God meets me and says, no, you have hated wickedness and have loved righteousness. Therefore, the Lord your God has set you above your companion and has set you above and anointed you with oil of gladness oil of joy above your companion. And you know when God talks to you, after that, it is like drawing off the curtain and then showing you mm. who you want, what you want. And he showed me all this. I wrote it in that book, Political Evangelism. I saw it. I said, what? I am here. You know, admiring what you shouldn't admire. Maybe I am here. Eh? Of all the women that, that are my, in fact, my category, Somebody who has held a public office and have made such influence at public level and has also succeeded at the family level, have raised good children, have, they have married, they have families, they know the Lord. And, he, uh, and you look at the others and say, uh-huh, uh-huh. He was showing me, look this, look this, look this. You want to do it. I said, God, I fell down and I apologized and I danced, I sang to tenderness and I got up like fury. I'm there with my God. Don't tell me anything else. So, you know this, you go and you find out to put it there. But that day was like a devil and God met me. For me, appear I make to every Ugandan. God is real and the devil is real. And you choose whom to follow and you'll be able to make the influence that will last. And therefore, you leave a legacy which is admirable and which you are proud of. If you follow the devil, he has also his legacy. You know, he came to steal, to kill, and destroy. You know what will happen. I wish you the best. Miria, thank you so much. We could go on and listen to you for forever, but you such powerful words of wisdom. I don't even want to summarize it and spoil it for people you will summarize it as you have received it and influence 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 for the world you have a purpose you have a talent you have a skill use it to influence and impact this world thank you so much for listening to us until we bring you our next guest on footprints we wish you very well Thank you for listening to us. Bye-bye.